So, la, 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 la. <sighs> this is really hard and I don't want to do it. <laughs> All right, so I am getting started on the hat. So I have put on my wig and my ears in order to get an accurate measurement of the head circumference that I'm going to need for the cone part of my hat. So I'm, I want the hat to sit kind of like back on my head. One, because I just like the way that looks. Two, because I want to show off the wig. And three, so that it doesn't get in the way of the ears at all. So I'm going to be measuring around kind of like the crown of my head. This is definitely <laughs> easier if you have another person. Taking these fucking ears off, they're getting away. Okay. So I'm getting, <laughs> every time I do it, I'm getting between 19 and 21 inches. So I'm gonna do 20, just for the difference, you know? So once I have my circumference, which is 20 inches, I divide that by pi to get the diameter. So 20 divided by 3.14 is 6.369, blah, 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 blah. Round that up to 6.4, which is 6 and 2 fifths inches. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to explain a little bit better about how I actually made these patterns, because in watching the footage back, I realized that I didn't really explain it at all, in fact. Um, the tutorial I have linked below really goes into depth about all of it um, and you should definitely go watch that because I don't know what I'm doing and I just basically use their instruction. Um, but here's what I did to get these pattern pieces. So I took that measurement that I made for the circumference of my head um, divided by pi and that is this inner part of the hat. So this is the um, part that's going to sit on my head basically. So I actually made two patterns. This was the first one that I made um, and I decided that it was too big so I took it down a few inches but the same basic method worked. I figured out how big that I wanted the brim to be and I decided for this one that I wanted to start trying it at 15 inches. Obviously you would measure from the middle but the middle's gone because I cut out a huge circle from it. But what I did on the pattern paper was that I just measured 15 inches, 15 inches, 15 inches, 15 inches, all the way around in a half circle. And then I drew lines all the way up on those 15 inch marks and then used the ends of the lines to draw a circle. So instead of having to use a compass or like trying to find a circular object that was big enough to trace the edge around in order to get the perfect circular shape. I just, I used math, you know? You, you use a little geometry, you use a little math, you get a little hat. That's what we're talking about here. So I just connected the points of the lines and because they were all 15 inches, which is what my radius was, then boom, bam, boom, we got a soikle here. Uh, the comb was a lot easier. I just did, I wanted it to be tall, so I did 20 inches tall, which my ruler is not that long, so you just have to believe me that that's how long it is. And then I marked the center line of that, and then I took the radius of my head measurement, or sorry, diameter of my head measurement which was I think 6.4 whatever and measured that to the edge on both sides obviously because once this is a full circle you're gonna have to have it attach all the way around. Is this making any sense? I don't know. I don't know math. I don't know science. I don't know sewing so <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, and then it was easy enough to just draw a curved line this way. I just kind of went for it, you know? I just, I trusted that I could get a relatively even curve that would sew together well. And then to get the sides, all I did was take a straight edge and draw from the point all the way down to that line that I had made. And then I cut it out. Oh, oh. It's a good look. So I hope that that explanation was like a little bit more thorough. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely go watch the tutorial that I linked because they're like actual seamstresses and know what they're doing. <laughs> but yeah, I just, uh, I don't really consider any of my videos to be tutorials. It's just kind of, I like making the videos and I think it's nice to see a beginner <laughs> going through the process. Um, maybe it's not, maybe it's really annoying. <laughs> but anyways, whatever, let's get back into the rest of the video. I've patterned out the brim and the cone of the hat. Um, I'll leave a link to the tutorial that I used for these in the description. My brim of my hat has a diameter of 27 inches and then my cone is 22 inches tall. So I have my pattern pieces lying on the fold of the fabric and I'm going to pin them down because this fabric is a little temperamental and because it's four way stretch it kind of moves all over the place, so I want to make sure that it stays in the spot where the pattern is while I'm cutting. Alright, so now I've pinned everything up and I'm going to cut it up. I also want to use the fabric that I used as a lining for my cloak as the underside of the brim of the hat, so I'm just going to cut out my pattern again in this fabric. Alright, so I'm gonna uh, attach some iron-on pellon to the cone to give it a little more stability and help it hold its shape while it's on the hat. So I've cut out the inner piecing and now I'm gonna follow the instructions on the package to iron it onto the fabric. So I'm going to pin and sew the brim and lining pieces together. At this point I forgot to mention that you do have to cut one straight line from the outside to the inside circle in order to flip your brim right side out when it's finished sewing and also so that it attaches to the cone of the hat more easily. Okay, so I finished sewing the lining to the brim. And now I'm going to pin the cone of the hat to the brim right sides together. All right, and now I'm gonna sew them together uh, using a zigzag stitch. Okay, so now the hat and brim are attached and I'm gonna fold it inside out do, do, do. Again, right sides together, and I'm gonna sew up from the area where I cut the brim in half all the way up to the point of the cone. Whoa. 
All right, so here's the hat. Obviously, I still have to add the wire to the brim and to the um, actual cone of the hat in order to make it stand up. But, woohoo, I think it looks great. I love the lining. And it does fit a little big on my head, so I think with the wig on, it will. <laughs> I think with the wig on, it'll fit perfectly. I'm really happy with the size. I think taking it down a couple inches from my original design um, was a really good idea because it's still really big like I wanted, but it's not like insanely big. <laughs> so. Yay. Hey guys, it's me again, future Alexine. <laughs> Again, when editing this footage, I realized that I did not conclude this video in any sort of way whatsoever. So, we're here to do that now. To be fair, I was kind of in the middle of con crunch and I was sewing a giant hat for the first time in my life. So, I kind of just, when I was done, was like, you know what, I'm not going to film the rest of it because I got to do it real quick. Here is the hat in its current state. So here's the hat in its current state. Um, as you can see, I put a wire into the brim and how I did this was I just basically cut a little hole in the seam and fed a wire through um, until I got the desired tautness on the brim. Uh, and then I just sewed the seam closed and sewed through the loop that I made in the wire to connect it to the other side in order to keep it from moving around. Um, it's not perfect. It does kind of like flop around and like I kind of have to constantly adjust it, but it's better than having nothing. I think if I were to improve upon the design, what I would do is make an actual like wire frame within the hat so that the whole brim stays up but is still poseable because um, what's important for me is being able to wear it with the ears and so I wanted it to be able to fold kind of like up at the sides so that I could push it away from the ears. The cone also has a wire in it um, so that it is poseable as well before this, I had a bunch of scrap fabric from this project just stuffed into the brim so that it would give it, um, you know, shape. But that was really heavy and it was making the hat really difficult to wear. I have to attach the hat to my wig with safety pins and then pose it into a position where it doesn't move because the first time I wore it, I was on the subway, I was going to BK Comic Con, it was like 90 degrees outside, I was sweating, the hat was flopping, I kept pulling my wig off, and I was just like freaking the f out. So, I got stuffing, and I'm hoping that this will help it keep its shape without weighing it down too much. So, I'm gonna go ahead and stuff this hat. <laughs> All right, so here it is with the stuffing in it, and I really can't even express to you guys how much of an improvement it is upon the <laughs> fabric. Like, it completely <laughs> changes the hat, because before the fabric was so heavy that it just like weighed the entire hat back, and now it's completely poseable, it stands even straighter up than it did before it's like <sighs> I'm so happy I did that now I have a couple like bits and bobbles that I wanted to add on to it and I thought I'd take you along with me to do that as well the first thing I'm going to do is attach this bell to the point of the hat um, I found this bell when I was getting my fabric for my Bill Cipher cosplay videos in that series coming soon <laughs> and I just was like 
I have to put this on my taco hat. It's huge. It's the biggest jingle bell I've ever seen in my life. And how could I not? How could I not put this on? I did sew this on the morning <laughs> um, before the first day of Otakon when I was dressing up as taco. Um, I just quickly hand sewed it into place with the sewing kit that I brought, but it fell off. Um, while I was dancing at the rave that night, I think. And so I'm gonna just reattach it now a little bit stronger than before. All right, so there's the bell all sewn on. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I got this chain and these little star beads at Michael's um, and I'm going to run the chain like along the rim of the hat hanging down and then um, on a couple of them I'll add little stars to the end. Alright guys, that's where I'm going to leave it for today so I can go ahead and edit and upload this video. I added one little baby star in the back. Uh, I don't have time to add the rest now, but I'm going to do it when I have a moment. They'll definitely be featured when I do my full photo shoot for Taco. Uh, I'm so glad that I came back and like did the things I needed to do to fix this hat because... <laughs> It was like honestly kind of a nightmare before and now it I can even wear it just like on my actual head. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think about this hat. If you're gonna try some of the techniques that I use in this video, if you like the decorations that I added to it. Give me your thoughts, give me your opinions. Let's have a conversation down below, leave it, let's go. And if you like to see more content from me, consider subscribing. I post new videos every Wednesday and they're all cosplay related. I always film when I'm crafting, so every step of everything that I do for all of my cosplays will always be on this channel. If you like to see the finished result and some cool photos, then check out my Instagram. It's also Zini Tree Cosplay. Until then, thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.